Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show. This is Maria Liberati. Bonjour and ciao to all of my listeners around the world. And thanks for all of your emails and comments on what food means to you. So what does food mean to you? Food is one of the only things in our everyday lives that evoke all of the five senses. It has the power to bring back timeless memories instantly. Being a foodie, my memories are arranged by foods. And for me, some of the best memories of a season are the fresh vegetables and fruits that Mother Nature gives us. In winter, I'm always wishing for the vibrant tastes and bold colors of my summer garden. And I consider homemade jardinera my summer scrapbook of those flavors. Jardinera is a versatile condiment that can be used on a variety of different foods, such as bruschetta, pasta, salad, eggs, omelets, tuna salad, sandwiches, and much more. In the U.S., it's not uncommon to use jardinera on pasta, and in the Chicago area, on pizza. In Italy, it's a typical antipasto or appetizer. But for me, it's just my way of preserving summer in a jar. Make some extra jars and bring along as a hostess gift for informal dinner parties and picnics. Jardinera makes the perfect appetizer and can be served with cheeses, crackers, breads, breadsticks, in a salad, and even as a cool side dish or alone. Of course, not everyone has their own garden, but your local farm market should have a selection of fresh veggies in season. Locally grown vegetables make the most flavorful jardinera, and one that is reminiscent of summer's flavors. Here's my favorite recipe, and if you want to make some extra jars for gifts, you will also need handmade cards and some twine to tie around the tops of the jars to attach the cards. The jars also make nice informal gifts for the holiday table. Who wouldn't welcome a fresh taste of summer during the doldrums of winter? So here's my favorite recipe for homemade jardinera, or as I call it, my summer in a jar. Four pounds of mixed vegetables in season, fresh, and local if possible. Carrots, celery, green beans, cauliflower, red and yellow peppers, cipollini onions, two cups of white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, three tablespoons of sugar. Cut carrots into small sticks, cut the celery into large chunks, Cut the green beans into large pieces. Cut the peppers into large chunks. Peel the cipollini onions and leave them whole. Use only the florets of the cauliflower that have been detached from the hard stalk. Wash all the vegetables and pat dry. Place vinegar and oil in a large pot with sugar and a pinch of salt. Bring to a boil. Place all vegetables in the pot and let boil for another two minutes, mixing consistently. Remove from heat. Place the still hot mixture in jars that have been sterilized for preserving. Leave about a half inch of room at the top. Seal the jars. Boil water in a large pot. Submerge the sealed jars in the boiling water and let boil for at least five minutes. Remove the jars and let cool. Wipe the jars dry and label with a date. Leave the jars unopened for at least three weeks before tasting. Unopened jars of jardinera can be stored up to six months in a cool, dry place. Once open, the jars can be stored in the refrigerator for one week. So what memories does food bring back to you? Maybe it's of a simpler time, fresh lemons at a lemonade stand, Sunday mornings waking up to the aroma of fragrant tomato sauce for afternoon dinner. Or perhaps it's just something as simple as peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, one of my favorites. Creating that connection to a special person, place, thing, or time. Writer and attorney Anthony Locascio, my guest for today's podcast, wrote an entertaining book about the memories of his grandmother, Eva Ovarsi, and her incredible life. And it's a fun read to have a peek into all of her memories. So 
excited today because he's an author and attorney. And I know that the subject today was food and how they spark memories. And uh, I thought this book was so perfect for today's segment. This is Anthony Locascio, and he's also an attorney, but he's an author. And I did meet Anthony at a book signing that we were both doing. The book is just such a an interesting read. It's not extremely long. So, you know, if you want an interesting read when you're on the beach um, this summer or just sitting outside or wherever you're at, if you're home, you know, if you have to stay home, it's such a great, fun read. And if you have or had an Italian grandmother, you'll even really relate. So um, I'd like to welcome Anthony Locascio. Anthony, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Maria. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. So Anthony's book is called Message from Overseas. Anthony, what made you want to write this story of your grandmother, Message from Overseas? Why why did you feel it was so important to share all these lovely stories? Uh, It's a great question. My grandmother tells the best stories. She always had ever since I was a child. And um, every time she told a new ridiculous story, story, at least it was ridiculous to me, I said, you need to write a book. And as I got older, so I've probably been saying this since I was a kid, but when I was in my teen years and young 20s, I continued saying it because I heard more and more stories. There was just so much going on in the world. And I thought to myself, people need to hear stories from people that grew up during really, truly tough times and found their way to happiness. And that was a big reason why I wrote this book, to convey these stories of struggle and sacrifice, young men and women, um, and I do mean women. My uh, grandmother was a spectacular woman, um, and I wanted them to hear these stories. And, and maybe they could relate to somebody that was 60 years older than them. Yes, definitely. And and I think that's so important because I know my grandparents, there was a lot of sacrifice and struggles. And I always look back to, you know, the things they told me and more and more things that I found out about their life. And I use it as an inspiration because, you know, you realize, hey, they were able to overcome so many things. So, you, you know, whenever you're on a downtime, you just think of how they overcame all the things they did in the hard times that they had right they had such hard times and my grandmother used to tell stories to my grandparents well you know Italian grandparents there you go but some of this stuff actually you know I found out more about the stuff when I went to Italy and and researched like my grandfather my grandmother's life but one thing that I found out that was true is my grandmother actually sang in an opera with Mario Lanza who was she was from South Philly and well she immigrated to South Philly and that's where he lived the famous opera singer and um, so that was true but your grandmother had loads and loads of stuff going on which I just found so delightful so interesting so what surprised you was there anything that surprised you while you were writing this story and doing more research or from consulting with your grandmother anything that you can tell us any surprises that you found out well just generally speaking the surprise to me was how accurate her memory was. So my goal was to get this book completed and done before her 90th birthday. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I was able to accomplish that, even though it took me a long time to write with a whole bunch of things going on in my life during that time. And this wasn't, you know, my career. So this was what I was doing on the side for fun, for family, just to enjoy. And I was gobsmacked by how much she told and how many details were accurate. I There was nothing that I could find that contradicted a single thing she said. There was some clarification, or if she didn't know, I was able to find out more, but there was never a time where I was said flat out, sorry, grandma. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> I don't know where you got that from. I'm not sure where your memory went. That's wrong. No, everything she told me was was true, or I could confirm it. Wow, that's amazing. That is really amazing. And so many fun stories that that she had. So what is your favorite? Is there a favorite memory that um, she shared with you that's in the book? I would say the one story that was always served as kind of the foundation uh, was my grandmother's title of Miss Hoboken. Mm -hmm. Um, So this story is in the book and it's detailed beautifully um, 
she always told it quickly, you know, it was just, oh, I was Miss Hoboken. And it was very <laughs> important to her. If um, you're from the New Jersey or New York area, you know about Hoboken and you know about people like Frank Sinatra that came out of that very, very small town. And so it was very important to her. She was very proud that she was Miss Hoboken. But what <laughs> was so interesting was I was able to dive into the archives of the local history museums and find pictures of my grandmother with Frank Sinatra and his parents and the mayor of Hoboken and just these wow. like little tidbits that were able to confirm her story. And furthermore, how she was able to explain to me how horrible the day actually was. It was a miserable day out. It was cold. It was rainy. But there she was waving to the crowd. <laughs> um, so that was really fun to hear kind of, um, you know, the way she told it and how it was so grand. But then how she told me in more detail as we were developing the book, I found out how really horrendous of a day it was, but how it's still such a happy memory that she holds to this day. Oh, that's really that's really a fun, a fun memory. And, you know, I wanted you to give the the listeners here a little idea, a little smattering of the book because they don't really, you know, if they haven't read it, I've read it. I, I was fortunate enough to read it. So you did give them a little bit, a little taste of how interesting it is and, and all this stuff. So she she actually grew up right in the same neighborhood as Frank Sinatra, right? Oh, yes. Frank Sinatra. And as I say, um, other uh, notorious and infamous people, uh, <laughs> mobsters that were all very, very nice <laughs> men at the time. And yes. uh, but it's just how how history unfolds. Um, yes. And when you're in it, sometimes you don't even realize you're a part of history until later. I really like those quotes that each chapter starts off with. They're inspiring, actually. They're very inspiring. And your grandmother's story is definitely an inspiring one as we're as we're saying. So speaking of memories though, this episode is about the memories we can create with food and family. What what are your thoughts on the connection between the two? You know, as Italians, that's like such a strong there's such a strong connection there all the time. So what are your thoughts on that connection? Well I, I can't I can't agree more. Um before I was a formal author um, I wrote as a child a short story, and uh -huh. it was all about family around the dinner table at my grandmother's house. Uh -huh. And I was reflecting on the strong, heavy New Jersey, New York accents that were being used around the table, uh -huh. the smell of the pork and the sauce. Um, and all together, that, that memory was with the foundation, was rooted in dinner yes that and that is such a strong memory because it it actually inspired you to write that story so yes it's a strong memory boy you should probably try to develop that out that sounds like that's an interesting that could be something really interesting also so um tell us where can people find message from overseas a message from overseas is available on Amazon in, in all geographic regions. Uh, so online, you can find that online. online. Just yes. um yes. And all as always, as I always ask all my guests to share with everyone, what does food mean to you? As I'm getting older, I really feel that food, as you put it, is about caring and nurturing. The amount of time and attention that's necessary to put together a single hot meal, let alone weeks, months, or years worth of meals on the table for family to come together and, and not only be full, but be nourished is um, just the, the purest example of what it means to, to parent and to uh, really care for others. That's what I think it means to me. That That's great. That's great. And you'll probably agree with me too that, um, sharing food is really like sharing love so like when your grandparents or you know i i know i had one aunt that used to go there and like she would want you to eat and i was really young when that happened and when i got older i realized wow that was actually her way of sharing you know that she loved us and wanted to take care of us so i'm Absolutely. sure you'll, you'll agree with me on mm -hmm. that yes anthony locasho 
author and attorney. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And again, message from overseas. It's such a great story. Um, and you can look it up online on Amazon, on uh, the Internet. You can find it anywhere. Thanks, Sounds Maria. Like, right? so Thank fun. you, Anthony. Thank you. Take care. I will be talking to you. Great. Bye. Look forward to it. Bye-bye. Writer and attorney Anthony Locascio, my guest for today's podcast, wrote an entertaining book about the memories of his grandmother, Eva Ovarsi, and her incredible life. And it is fun to read and have a peek into all of her memories. Thanks for joining us and listening to the Maria Liberati Show. If you have any dishes inspired by the Jardinera recipe here to show off, or if you make it a jar of Jardinera and you want to show it off, take a picture and hashtag the Maria Liberati Show and post the photo on social media. We'll be gathering pictures and posting on my website. Thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and my writing intern, David Hunt. Go to my website, marialiberati.com, to keep up with my blog and the show and my book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. Push that button to like, share with your friends. Join me on Twitter at Maria Liberati with a capital M, on Instagram at Maria Liberati, and Chef underscore Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, and on Pinterest at Maria Liberati. This podcast is heard all over the world on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, and iHeartRadio, Radio Republic, and more. And you can purchase any of the books in the Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, at marialiberati.com and many other booksellers around the world online. So what does food mean to you? Hashtag your answer with hashtag the Maria Liberati show in a recorded soundbite of 60 seconds or less or a social media post of 50 words or less or email directly to me at maria at marialiberati.com. If selected for an upcoming podcast segment, you'll receive an autographed copy of my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming segments, email me directly at maria at marialiberati.com. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.